everybody. Today we are out here checking out the Cyrusher XF900. It is a motorcycle inspired, full suspension, fat tire e-bike, and it's right over here. So Cyrusher has been around since 2014 and they actually opened up their own factory in 2017. Um, currently they ship straight to consumer and they offer a two year limited warranty. You can check their website for all the details on that, see what's covered, see what's not. It has a 750 watt motor and a lot of get up and go. Uh, in some configurations it can reach speeds up to 31 miles an hour. So you're going to want to check with your local laws and regulations and make sure you're adhering to those. Got a couple different modes on this. We've got pedal assist, a twist throttle, and a walk mode. Uh, the walk mode is pretty brisk so you're going to want to make sure that your sneakers are tied up and you are uh, ready to go. Uh, currently it comes in one size. Uh, it's got about 75 inches overall length and it comes in three colors. We've got uh, blue, yellow, and white. Uh, so this is the white one right here. It ships about 80% assembled. It weighs about 74 pounds with the battery. Um, the recommended rider height on this one is anywhere between five foot four inches to six foot two inches. It's got a stand over height of just about 35 inches. Um, the battery on this is 48 volts, locking, removable, uh, and the range is estimated between 35 to 50 miles um, per charge. And the controller is actually integrated into the frame. The frame over here, we've got a 6061 aluminum alloy frame, um, and we've got this larger dual spring seat. Um, you can see right here, we've got about a 19 and a half inch reach, um, and it is a pretty forward riding position. So if you're somebody who has back problems or knee problems, this might not be the position you'd want to ride in. Maybe you'd look at something more like a step through or something like that. Um, the seat does have pretty good padding. Again, this dual spring. It's got this integrated light here in the back, which is cool to see. Uh, it's got a minimum saddle height of 28 inches and a maximum saddle height of 32.5 inches. Um, and like I mentioned, it is a pretty comfortable ride. We've got these big 26 inch by four inch tires. You can have them anywhere between five PSI up to 30 PSI, uh, depending on the terrain and the comfort. If you were out on the beach, maybe in some softer sand, you'd want to have it maybe closer to five. And then if you're out on some hard packed trails or sidewalks, things like that, maybe you're going to want it closer to that uh, 30 PSI. And up here we have the rear suspension. Um, this one's rated for 750 pounds and it comes with 20 millimeters of deformation. So just kind of adding to the overall comfort um, of the ride here. And then we'll head on to the front. So up here we have a front suspension. This is a Partner 26 inch front fork. Um, it is adjustable. Uh, it comes with 110 millimeters of travel, 35 millimeters of deformation. There's no quick adjustment knobs um, on this one though. All the wires heading into the frame there. And then heading up here, we've got these ergonomic um, rubber grips. They're, they're not locking, um, but I was able to find that I wasn't really able to you know, move them around or anything. They seem, they seem pretty secure. And if we head over onto this side, same grip style. Um, we've got the half grip on this side and the throttle is over here. Uh, very responsive, snaps back pretty good. And these handlebars, they're about 28 inches wide. So pretty standard for a mountain bike handlebar. Um, just something to take into consideration if you're trying to fit this into maybe a smaller SUV or any other place where length is gonna be, uh, be an issue for you. And then over here on the right side, we have the Shimano Acera SL M310 Rapid Fire Shifters. Uh, this one is the seven speed. Uh, it's your standard thing over here. We've got uh, thumb and index paddles on this. And if we head around to the other side, on this side we have, again, the Shimano Acera SL M310 Rapid Fire Shifter. This one is the three speed. So on this left side, there's a lot going on. Um, but I'm able to find that my hand's able to get in here and get to all the controls, get to everything that you know I need to get to. So that's, uh, that is cool to see. Um, we've got Tektro dual disc brakes on this. Um, something to make sure is before you go out and ride this thing, you know, those are tuned correctly. You're gonna wanna make sure you're able to stop. Um, always a good thing. Um, the discs measure at 180 millimeters. So two of those, which is pretty cool to see, especially for a bike, you know, this powerful and, uh, and this heavy. Um, over here we have the control pad, um, we've got lights, we've got the horn, the horn is actually very loud, I would not test that out in, uh, in a garage or, uh, or in the house, it is, uh, it's something that, uh, that will be heard for sure. Um, so then we're going to hold on this uh, third button here, 
and that is going to turn on the display for us. Um, this display is 3.7 inch LCD. It's not in color, but that's okay. You know, some people prefer the uh, the grayscale, the higher contrast. It's maybe a little bit easier to see in the uh, the daylight. So we can press that third button again, and we can change some of the readouts. Um, some of the things you'll see on here is uh, a charge indicator. We got a speedometer. We got an odometer, trip odometer, uh, pedal assist levels, watts. So there are some advanced settings on this, uh, but they are pretty expansive. So I'll probably have to save getting into that for another video. And if we head on to the back, we've got the Shimano Turney TY300 derailleur. Now the Turney is the basic Shimano. It's uh, it's the lower tier of the Shimano. Um, but with Shimano, they've been around for almost 100 years. You know, we're expecting quality uh, from this part right here. Shifts well, does everything I need it to do. Uh, no complaints about this. And then back here we have the motor. This is a Bafang 750 watt motor. Uh, puts out about 80 newton meters. Very responsive, well tuned. Um, no complaints so far on, on this one. And then over here in the back, we've got the other Tektro 180 millimeter dual disc brake. Um, again, a good idea for dual brakes on this since there's so much power and since it's a, one of those bigger bikes. Um, we move up to the front here. There's no chain guard, um, which is maybe something we wanna see. Maybe we would upgrade this. Maybe this is for a future model. Um, but if you're out there on the trails and you were to hit something, it'd be nice to have a little protection um, as the chain is what, uh, what keeps everything rolling. Um, down here at the cranks, we've got pro wheel cranks. These are 170 millimeters in length and some Wellgo B087 pedals. And we'll head on up to the front. Again, there's that front disc brake for you. And on this side, we've got a quick release on the front wheel, which is pretty cool, uh, especially if transport's gonna be an issue. Um, you can kind of cut down that overall length by a couple of inches taking this wheel off. Maybe allow you to maneuver this into some uh, some tighter places. And then the uh, the front light here, it's 6,500 lumens. Um, should be enough to see at night, but that's gonna require a follow-up video where you can kind of go in and test the effectiveness um, of that. And also we got these motorcycle style fenders. Um, fenders are always nice to have, always nice to see that included on these bikes. Um, especially for this bike because you're going to be riding it out there in the dirt, mud, water, things like that. And these fenders are really going to help protect you from all that stuff kicking up and, and hitting you. You know, basically anything to avoid getting back to the house with one big brown stripe in the front and one big brown stripe um, in the back. Again, this one has a very powerful motor, so you're going to want to check local rules and regulations. You know, just make sure you're, you're following the law whatever your laws are in that area. Um, and this is a fun bike, right? You're gonna be riding this out in the woods, you know, on private land, uh, maybe in the mountains, uh, maybe some urban, depending on the areas um, and the configurations of the bike. But that's, that's the main goal of this one, is to get out there, have fun out there in nature. Um, so let's go snag the keys and, uh, and check this battery out. All right, so we got the keys and uh, and let's check this battery out. So this battery is 48 volts, 17 amp hour, Panasonic lithium ion. Um, and let's uh, let's see if I can do this with one hand. All right. Uh, weighs about eight pounds. Um, pretty standard e-bike battery weight. You know, not the heaviest, not the not the lightest. Um, it's got this USB port on the side here for charging a phone or a small device, which I like that. Tested it out, seems to function as intended. And on this side, we have a three amp charger. Um, this one weighs about half a pound. Um, it's pretty quiet. I didn't notice any noise while, uh, while charging it up. So now that we talked about what the bike is, let's head out to the trails and see what it can do for the ride test. Hey everybody, before we get into the ride test, I just wanna to touch base on a few things um, real quick and let's head over to the bike. Um, number one, they do have these um, mounting points right here. So if you wanted to put um, a water bottle or a kit or something like that, uh, not a whole lot of space here, but if you had something that's maybe more of a, a slimmer profile, um, that would be a, a good option right there. And then this rear shock, uh, we went over it. Some people seem to be confused if it's air or spring. So I just want to clarify this actually is um, spring. 
and it is rated for 750 pounds. And then as far as the quick attachment on the front wheel, um, I actually did that on the way over here and popped it off, popped it back on. I could do it all um, with one hand on and off. Very simple. Um, and it actually did save me quite a bit of space um, in there. All right, so that's pretty much it. Let's, uh, let's get into the ride test and uh, see what this thing could do. All right, we hopped on the bike. Let's uh, let's turn it on, and let's uh, let's get going. Very responsive on the throttle here. Um, you know, for putting around, this thing is pretty sweet. I'm just gonna get it in a uh, lower gear. So with the pedal assist on this thing, it uh, it basically kicks in and then takes you up to speed. So it'll kick in and then, you know, gets us up to that oh, 11, 12 miles an hour, something like that. I believe these readings are fairly accurate on this thing. Um, so that's pretty cool. So definitely one of those ones where you can tell when the, uh, the pedal assist kicks in. I find that it's pretty responsive as far as letting off of the pedal assist. So as soon as you get up to speed, it'll kick in. You get up there and then as soon as I stop, it stops. So I like that. You know, I'm not gonna run into a wall or something like that. And let's uh let's head out to the trails and uh see what we can do with that. There we go. Now we can really test out this pedal assist. We got it in pedal assist one, let's take it up to two. Getting up to some nice speeds here. Cruising. Brakes are handling really well. That's cool to see, especially on something this big and something that's gonna be going this fast. It's nice to know that uh, if we need to stop for some reason, we can do that. There we go. Yeah, this is the trail for testing out the pedal assist. Very nice, smooth, easy. We're just rocking and rolling. Oh, there's a snake. Whoa, okay. Very cool. I'm sort of tempted to hit this, see how much air we can get, but I probably will not. So we're coming down the backside. Again, brakes working excellent. And there we go. We are off to the races, absolutely cruising. So one of the things I noticed with these motorcycle forks is because there's one on each side, sometimes if you're turning it, it'll hit the frame. Um, I've only experienced that when I've been maneuvering it, right? So in the garage, around cars, things like that. Um, even on any of those tight turns in there, um, while you're riding it, I don't think you're gonna be able to turn the handlebars uh, far enough to experience that. Um, but you know, just something to keep into keep into consideration when you're you know maneuvering around in the garage or around people. You can't get that full 90 degree turn um, as you can with some bikes. Well, let's uh, let's try this. So we're in pedal assist five. Um, we got that big old mountain there at the end. Let's uh, let's see how much air we can get. Well, I'm not going to do that. But let's let's test out this pedal assist level five. I'm in the highest gear over here. Highest gear. Pedal assist five, let's see how fast we can get going over here. The wind is to our back, so that's gonna help us. Was able to just beat that uh, 28 mile an hour kickoff there. Um, and again, super responsive. As soon as I stop pedaling, the, uh, the motor kicks off. I really like that. Very responsive, very quick on that timing there. So we found this cool um, obstacle they got back here, kind of like a climbing and jumping scenario. Let's uh, let's see how this uh, how this thing handles on it. I oh, took that like a champ. Let's uh, let's try that again. I probably go to two on this side.
like a champ. All right, so let's do a braking test on this. First gear kind of towards the end here. Very responsive brakes. And again, with some of these powerful, um, you know, that can go this fast, that is a, that is a must have right there. All right, let's uh, let's check out what the uh, what the motor's doing down there. First, using the throttle right now. All right, we're bumping up to pedal assist level three. All right, so we're just gonna be cycling through the first crank set here. Uh, this is a 21 speed bike, so we will be going through three of those. And we're gonna cycle through the second crank set. be cycling through that third crank set. Right, guys that's gonna do it for the Cy Rusher XF 900 it's a very cool bike lots of fun riding around these trails you see we got it pretty dirty and if you need to know anything else about the bike you can head over to Cy Rusher's website I'll have a link down to that below and if there's any of the specifications um, you didn't see listed in the overview video they are probably down below all right guys we'll see you on the next one